YouTube. So today I will be doing a comparison video. Um, last comparison video I did was around a couple months ago, and I did a Nepenthes truncata, which is this thing, and Nepenthes sabayensis, which is not here. I did a comparison video, and those two are not very similar plants, so we had quite a lot to compare. But today I decided to do like two often taxonomically and scientifically confused over and I want to get the difference clear between these two species. So before I start the um sort of the comparison, I would like to um it will ask you guys if it would be great if you leave a like and subscribe because it really shows support and because I'm about to take YouTube more seriously, so being one of my earlier subscribers is probably a good idea. So, right here we have um, a Nepenthes truncata. This is a born. Both of these are Borneo exotic clone, which is if you don't know what's Borneo exotics, it's a um, company, um, a Nepenthes, which is a tropical pitcher plant company, in located in Sri Lanka. It specializes in. Um, selling pitcher plants uh, worldwide to those uh, retailers and normal people if you're not a retailer you can't buy plants from them and they sell plants straight um, out of a lab which is um, flask so they do mass tissue culturing if you don't know what's tissue culturing you put um, little um, tissue samples into like a um, bacteria and micro free chamber like a little jelly cup sort of thing and then you put some jelly like um, nutrient agar into it and it will just grow into a new plant that's how you clone the penfees so that company is called Borneo Exotics and in and I got this one from Brad's Greenhouse which is the only Borneo Exotic guy selling Borneo Exotic plants in Canada so very nice and Let's, I'll show you the tags if just just in case you you're um, in case you want to know. So this is Nepenthes truncata Borneo exotics three thousand two hundred three. This is the clone Nepenthes Rob Kentlii B Borneo exotics three thousand five hundred seventeen. So both very good of one of the most famous clones they have. This is the Highland Paisen form, which is the red Highland form of truncata, and this is the. King of um, Queen of Hearts cross crossed with King of Spades, Rob Cantley. If you don't know what's the King of Hearts and Queen of Spades, it's the original um, Nepenthes Rob Cantley um, species that like was found, like the original specimens. Well, it's the seeds of the original specimens, and it came out to be King of Hearts, um, King of Spades, Queen of Hearts, and I'm pretty sure there's only yeah, it's only one Queen of Hearts. So this is Queen of Hearts cross with King of Spade, which is basically Nepenthes Rob Cantley cross with Rob Cantley. So this is one of those clones, very promising clone. And let's get into the biology and how are they different. So let's talk about the leaf and stem structure. So for Truncata, as you can see, it has a heart shaped leaf. Um, it's not that pronounced. It's so you can sort of see Cyril has a, like a more elongated heart shape. And as for Rob Kent, yeah, it has sort of not much of a difference, but it has slightly more of a um, pronounced V inside of here. So there, there you have it. But for stem structure, they're slightly different. Um, let's, use, let's say Truncata, as you can see, the stems are quite like closely attached to the leaf. The leaves are, let's say, the leaves are closely attached to the stems, but on Rob Kentley eyes, as you can see, like the stem, there's actually a huge um, stem before you get to the leaf. As for this one, just a very short one. So that's the difference. And um, for stem, like growing style and stem joint, like the truncata has slightly more bulky and then Rob Kentley is slightly more skinny. That's pre pretty much it. And for growing speed, both of these are very slow growers. Personally, Rob Kentley does grow a bit faster than Truncata. So there you have it. Let's say a Rob Kentley, it's around a leaf per month. And for Truncata, it's a leaf per one and a half month. So 
this guy's a little bit more slower growing. So there you have the growth comparison. And as for pictures, um, there it's it's one of the most two, two different things about it. So let's take a look at Rob Kent the eye first because it's better usually. Well, it is a better plant. Um, it's more popular and thought after a species because um, if you don't know what Rob Cantlia looks like, you should um, search it up. Um, you can just search up the Penfi, search up this thing, become positive video. If you haven't seen a mature plant of this, search it up. You will be surprisingly stunned of how beautiful this plant is because it has the huge peristome. Like if you don't know what's peristome, it's just a lip, like you see the lip of the Nepenthes. And it already has a decently thick um, lip thing. And it will definitely get bigger. And in terms of picture size, this, this is slightly more longer, the picture. And then this is slightly more bulkier and fatter. But main difference is this one is usually green and this one's usually black, the color. So that's the picture difference. And this has a still has um, truncata. Um, it still has a very thick peristome, but I'm not as thick as the Rob Kentley eye. And in terms of price, for like a nice um, Highland uh, red clone, it'll cost you probably around $60, $70 to buy a plant this size. And for Rob Kentley eye to buy a plant this size, on average, probably $180. And when I'm talking about dollars, I mean by Canadian which I'm not a US, I'm not a money converter, but I probably think around um, 140 US. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure what's the conversion uh, rate. So there you have the comparison. So for growing, um, these two plants, um, for like, let's say for terms of difficulty, they are around the same, but for terms of like humidity, Rob Kentley I requires slightly more humidity than Truncata. And well, Truncata requires slightly more heat than Rob Kentley I, so um, if that makes sense. So for medium, I just use long fiber sphagnum. Um, lighting, I just use fluorescent lights. This is not the light I use, this is my lamp, but uh, I used compact fluorescent bulbs and during like 14 hours a day, that's a nice number. Temperature, they both use room temperature, humidity. Um, probably you, if you live in like a drier area, um, I live in a pretty dry area. So I usually grow them in a, like a little fish tank. And once they get bigger, I might be investing in the greenhouse. So, well, if you live in a, if you're lucky and fortunate enough to live in a, more humid area, let's say Florida, you can grow them in the inside. It, it, your, the, your room temperature is humid enough. So hope you, hopefully you liked this comparison video. And if you like this video and you want to see more of it, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell and notification so you don't miss out on my newer videos. So yes. So since it's summer break, I might be posting more often and the coronavirus situation, I'll be probably posting videos more often. So yeah, peace out, uh, like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next video.